I'm Bob, and I collect stamps. Welcome back to Bob Collects Stamps. As promised, this time I'm going to talk about King Arthur again, but rather than tell a story about King Arthur, I'm going to cover the stamps that have been issued depicting Arthur and those around him. Before beginning in earnest, I'll ask that you consider liking the video and subscribing to this YouTube channel. You know where the buttons are. Also, I want to be upfront about the fact that I don't know everything. I also know I don't know everything. And I know that as soon as I hit publish on this video, the facts themselves will change. Or I'll find a new stamp, like I did the first two times I hit publish on this video. So, with that in mind, here we go. King Arthur was, and maybe is, considered, in legend at least, king of all the Britons. The best modern evidence is that if he represents a real person, that person lived during the middle of the 5th century. That would be around 450 CE, about 1600 years ago. As we today understand the locations of the peoples of Great Britain at that time, if he was king of all the Britons, that means that he was basically king over an area along the English-Welsh border and south to the Dorset coast east of Cornwall. In later tellings of the story, Arthur was said to have been born at Tintagel Castle on the Cornwall coast. Earlier records suggest he might have been Welsh, but even those records suggest he lived in the border area. Regardless of birth, King Arthur has not been a big figure in postal and philatelic history. Of course, there was, as far as historians can tell, not much of a postal service in 5th century Britain. So, unlike other British monarchs, he didn't appear on any stamps during his reign, and there are no covers from his lifetime bearing his name as either sender or receiver. During Arthur's time, there could have been some sort of a general postal or paid messenger service in the area, though probably not. The first Roman emperor, Augustus, had established the first postal service in the West, the Cursus Publicus, around the turn of the millennium. It served Italy and the more advanced Roman provinces. It ran along the Roman roads and did run in Britain at least until the Romans withdrew in 410. It was not set up for private communications except by special permit, so can only partially be called a postal service. It survived, by the way, in the Eastern Roman Empire until sometime in the 8th century. Of course, the network of Roman roads certainly remained in service to the Britons for quite a while. There does not, though, seem to have been a continuation of a regular dispatch service, even for the wealthy. Regardless of there being no post at the time, or at least no adhesive postage stamps, here's a mock-up of how Arthur's royal silhouette might have looked if there had been stamps at the time. Better still, here's a mock-up of a full stamp. This features Stonehenge, something that certainly would have been around during Arthur's reign and could be considered worthy of putting on a stamp. Arthur and his story do feature on the postage stamps of several countries in our modern era, mostly but not always on stamps of Commonwealth countries. Though from the UK, the earliest instance of Arthurian stamps I have found are not official stamps. There was a postal strike in the UK from January to March of 1971, and many companies put out their own stamps during those months. Some were simply meant for stamp collectors, but these King Arthur package delivery service stamps appear to have been sold to pay for delivery service, though the company apparently also did some free delivery during the strike as well. The non-denominated stamps feature what appears to be Arthur, as well as Guinevere, the sewing frame, and a couple of other scenes. I have found examples printed in black, green, and red. There is one version that is printed in green on a pink background. Sadly, I can't find an online record of the company beyond the stamps. The earliest official postage featuring Arthur I could find is a pair of stamps issued on April 3rd, 1972 by Granada. They are part of a seventh stamp set honoring the 25th anniversary of UNICEF, the United Nations Children's Fund. Each stamp in the series featured a legendary figure related to what they considered as children's literature. I still read some of it. King Arthur appeared on the half cent and the 25 cent stamps with blue and pink backgrounds, respectively, while Robin Hood was on the one cent and 50 cent stamps. 
Robinson Crusoe on the two cent and seventy five cent stamps, and Mary and her little lamb for a dollar round out the set. Granada is located in the far eastern Caribbean between St. Vincent and the Grenadines and Venezuela. The currency of the former British colonies in the area is the East Caribbean dollar. Like the United States of America, the currency uses the dollar sign and the names dollars and cents. Austria was next, issuing a King Arthur stamp on May 8, 1974. It shows a drawing of a sculpture of Koenig Arthur. The sculpture is attributed to Peter Vischer the Elder, who lived from 1455 to 1528, but may really have been done by his son, Peter Vischer the Younger, who lived from 1487 to 1528, dying a year before his father. The sculpture was based on design by Albrecht Dürer, who lived from 1471 to 1528, and is part of the tomb of Maximilian I, Holy Roman Emperor. He lived 1459 to 1519, reigning from 1508. The tomb sculpture was begun in 1521. In this instance, the Durer drawings were turned into a sculpture, which was turned into a drawing for the stamp. In 1461, one Thomas Mallory, while serving in prison for several violent offenses, wrote a manuscript he called The Whole Book of King Arthur and His Noble Knights of the Round Table. I say one Thomas Mallory because we don't really know who he was. But this was the first, or at least the earliest we know, compilation of the legends and stories surrounding King Arthur and his court. Fragments in records and other stories go back to around the 9th century, but this is the first that laid it all out and made up a bunch of it too. The book was published in 1485, about five years after Mallory died. William Caxton, the printer, rewrote much of it, rearranged it, and changed the title to the much more compact The Mort de Arthur, and that's the name it has come to be known by. The 500th anniversary of that 1485 publication was in 1985, and the United Kingdom, finally officially, issued four Arthurian stamps on September 3rd of that year. These stamps were designed by Yvonne Gilbert. She also designed the single release cover for Frankie Goes to Hollywood's record, Relax. Additionally, she designed the 1984 edition covers of the Ursae Trilogy by Ursula K. Le Guin, along with the cover for Diane Duane's The Young Wizards from 2001, and The Ice Dragon by George R. R. Martin, published in 2006. She did not apparently do the artwork for the presentation folder for the stamp issue. King Arthur, being advised by Merlin, features on the 17 pence stamps, The Lady of the Lake and Excalibur on the 22 pence, Queen Guinevere and Sir Lancelot riding together on a horse, uh, apparently fleeing Canelot, are on the 31p, and Sir Galahad in prayer is the design on the 34 pence stamp. 1985 also saw a fun Romanian series of stamps related to King Arthur, featuring the Disney character Goofy. The storyline the set of stamps follow is loosely based on the 1889 novel by Mark Twain, a Connecticut Yankee in King Arthur's court. The stamps feature Goofy first arriving at Camelot. He is then tied to a stake in order to be burned, but he is saved by his prediction of an eclipse. Goofy then gets ready for a joust, and the fourth stamp features his nemesis in the joust, and finally there is a mini-sheet featuring the jousting action. King Arthur, played by a lion, sits in the stands with Merlin and Guinevere on that many sheet. If anyone watching has any ideas about where this Disney art comes from, please let me know. It does not come from Goofy's 1940s short, A Night for a Day. About a year later, on November 3, 1986, St. Vincent and the Grenadines issued a series of eight stamps featuring the story of Arthur. Like Granada, St. Vincent is a Commonwealth country. The 30-cent base stamp features the king himself holding Excalibur. Of course, he's holding the unsheathed sword by the blade. I suppose this is the part of the story where Excalibur recognizes friend versus foe and won't cut the king. The 45-cent stamp features Merlin. 60-cent shows young Arthur drawing the sword from the stone. The 75-cent stamp has a picture of Camelot. Moving on to the higher values, the dollar stamp shows the bestowing of Excalibur upon Arthur, featuring the Lady of the Lake providing Arthur with the magic sword. Dollar fifty shows the round table. 
The $2 stamp features a jewel-encrusted Holy Grail. Topping the series is a $5 stamp featuring Sir Lancelot. I was also able to get a set of color proofs for one of the stamps, as well as a set of specimen overprints. Either of these was very costly, and for me they were a good introduction to collecting that kind of philatelic material. In 1991, the Gambia issued a mini-sheet set of stamps and two additional mini-sheets featuring art from the 1963 Disney animated version of The Sword in the Stone. The story in that film was developed from the 1938 novel of that name by T.H. White. These were issued for the International Literacy Year and in celebration of the novel rather than the film. The story follows Arthur up to the time of the drawing of the sword from the stone when he becomes king. Three of the stamps also show Madame Mim, who I can't find reference to in other Arthurian stories. The first stamp shows a young Arthur and his older foster brother Kay out hunting. A second is a Merlin reading a book. And third and fourth are Arthur at his studies, first with Merlin, and the second with Arthur at a blackboard. Mim is featured on the next three. She and Merlin have a magical battle, spoiler alert, and at one point, as shown in the seventh stamp, she turns herself into a dragon, but Merlin turns himself into a germ that infects the dragon. The last two in the set show Arthur drawing the sword from the stone, and Arthur asleep on the throne, having been crowned king. The first of the two single-stamp mini-sheets shows Arthur following his tutor, Merlin, through the forest and being stalked by a wolf. The second sheet is a different image of a much more grown-up Arthur pulling the sword from the stone. In 2006, Alderney celebrated the centenary of the birth of author T. H. White, 1906-1964, with a set of stamps honoring his 1958 Arthurian novel compilation, The Once and Future King. This volume was a compilation of White's shorter Arthurian novels, the Sword in the Stone from 1938, subject of the Disney movie, The Queen of Air and Darkness, published in 1940, also from 1940, The Ill-Made Night, and the last in the collection, The Candle in the Wind, first published as part of the compilation. T.H. White and Arthurian completists know there's a final short novel, The Book of Merlin. It was published in 1977, more than a decade after the author's death. Alderney is the northernmost island of the Ballywick of Guernsey, a UK territory off the French Normandy coast. Stamps issued within the Ballywick are only valid postage within the islands. UK postage is required for anything leaving the Ballywick. The set of six Arthurian Alderney stamps was designed by Nick Watton, a freelance artist from southern England who has designed other stamps for Alderney. He also regularly designs sought-after first-day cover caches. These include some well-received caches for UK Star Wars stamps. The 29 pence Alderney stamp depicts King Arthur. He is looking at a sword blade, probably as he has just pulled it from the stone. The look on his face suggests the full magnitude of the act has not yet fully dawned on him. The 34 pence has Merlin peering over a pair of glasses that won't be invented for a few hundred more years. Or Gauss is on the 38 pence. This is her only appearance on the stamp that I can find. Guinevere looks out of the 42 pence stamp. The 47 pence stamp features Lancelot, though we don't see him, just his closed helmet. Mordred, spoiler alert, who will be the end of Arthur's story, is on the 68 pence stamp. Like his mother Murgaus, this appears to be his only postal appearance. The UK returned to the Arthurian legend, if not Arthur himself, in 2001. As a part of eight stamps featuring magic users, the Magical Realm set featured Merlin and Morgan Le Fay. This is Morgan's only stamp. Unfortunately, over the years, she has been confused with Morgaus, featured on the Alderney stamp, and not just by readers and viewers. Authors seem to treat the two characters interchangeably, merging and unmerging their stories. One, though, is Arthur's half-sister and the mother of Mordred. The other is the nemesis of Merlin, and called Nimue in the musical Camelot. And she's probably the character Madame Mim in the Disney movie. Beyond the story of King Arthur and his court, there are also several stamps featuring the King Arthur steam locomotive. There were 74 or 75, I lost count, 
of these LSWR N15 class British two-cylinder 460 express passenger steam locomotives. These locomotives were in service from 1918 till 1962. All of them were named for characters in the legend. King Arthur himself, British Rail number 30453, served from 1925 to 1961. The UK, Zambia, and the Maldives, at least, have all issued stamps with that locomotive, or one from this series. Given the importance of the legend, at least in the literary history of Great Britain, it seems a bit surprising to me that Arthur does not figure on many more stamps. But then there are so many other important subjects for stamps, like one more flower. And no matter how many stamps there are not, it's hard to forget there once was a spot called Camelot. All right, keep collecting, collect what you want. Don't follow anybody else's rules, except have fun and take care of yourself and your stamps. Thanks for watching.